Hello, this is Gregory Jackson for GrabJack.com. Welcome back to my tutorial series on creating the framework for an adventure RPG hybrid in RPG Maker MZ. In this lesson, we are going to create bushes that block the player from leaving the first screen and a sword that will let the player slash them. If you have not already done so, please watch this series from the beginning, as I mostly do not repeat explanations on things I have already covered, and therefore assume that you have been following along. Let's get started. After I completed Lesson 6, I went ahead and created everything for this lesson, and I will now go over it point by point. The first thing I did was create a new map inside Map 001. I named it 001 Cave. And then I set the tile set to Dungeon. The floor tile I chose to use is actually set to Solid by default. So I went into the tile set section of the database and edited the Dungeon's Tab A tiles so that the one I wanted was now passable. The way we will be using the Dungeon tile set in this framework is not going to be the same as in normal MZ design, so it does not bother me to make adjustments like this to its default functionality. While I was here, I also went ahead and added the Rocks and Trees tile set to Tab D as I wanted to use the dark gray rock tiles for the cave wall. This is a nod back to the classic Legend of Zelda where cave walls were a dark version of the game's rock tiles. And since we are aiming for that general visual style, I figured I would go that way as well. It's dangerous to go along. Take this. Anyone who has played Legend of Zelda remembers this first encounter with the old man who gives Link a wooden sword. As the player entered the cave, that message started to fill in, and we were presented with the first item we could pick up. That is what we are going to make happen now. In the Items section of the database, change the maximum number of items to zero and click OK to clear all default items, as we will not be using them. RPG Maker MZ supports up to 2,000 items per game, but right now we only need one. So we change the maximum again to one. Under General Settings, set the name to Sorty Rust and set the description to This Ancient Weapon is More Rust Than Sword. Actually, you can name it and set its description to whatever you want, as long as you know what it's going to be used for. Set item type to key item, set consumable to no, set scope to none, and set occasion to never. Now double click the image box next to icon, select icon number 96, and click OK. So we've got an item that will essentially just exist within the inventory when obtained and has no usable effect by itself. That's exactly what we want, so go ahead and click OK to update the database. Now that we have created the sword's database entry, let's create an in-game object that the player will pick up by walking over it. In Event Mode, right-click somewhere in the upper middle part of the cave and click New. In the Event Editor, set Name to Sorty Rust. Under Image, double-click the Image box. Scroll down and select exclamation point weapon from the list. Pick a suitable sword tile and click OK. Set priority to below characters. Set trigger to player touch. Now click new event page. This creates a new tab within the event editor. On this new tab, under conditions, click the box next to self switch and then set it to A. The Sorty Rust event has two stages to it. The first stage is for the in-game object that the player will pick up when walking over it. It will make a sound, add the Sorty Rust item to the inventory, and then it will disappear. The second stage is invisible and non-interactive. In fact, Tab 2, as it is right now, is all it needs to be. In an earlier lesson, we set up a switch as part of the Navsys event. A self-switch works the same way, except that it is tied exclusively to the event in question. Without using third-party plugins, self-switches on events cannot be turned on or off by other event processes. They are, however, very useful in making events change their state. 
Let's switch back to tab 1 so we can set up the event script. Create a new event command. On page 2, under Audio and Video, click Play SE for sound effect. In the Play SE window, scroll down in the list and select Sword 4, then click Play. That's a good sound for picking up a sword, so go ahead and click OK. Now we're going to create a new event command, but this time we'll click Play ME for music effect. This works the same as sound effects. Select Item and click Play. We'll be using this music effect in addition to a sound effect for picking up important items. They will play at the same time. Click OK. Next, we need to make the event Add the Sorty Rust item to the inventory. Let's create a new event command. On page 1, under Party, click Change Items. In the Change Items window, set Item to Sorty Rust. Operation is where we decide how to change an item's quantity. In this case, we want to increase it. Operand is where the quantity change is determined. It can be a constant or a specific number, or it can be determined by the value of a variable, which is useful if we want to, say, have a random quantity adjustment. In this case, we want a constant value of 1. And we can go ahead and click OK. And now we want to make the event disappear after being picked up, so we need a new event command. Under Game Progression, click Control Self Switch. Set Self Switch to A and Operation to On, then click OK. That's all we need to do on the event that gives the player the sword, so we can go ahead and click OK. The next thing we want to do is add a static character to the map and a couple of torches. Two tiles above the sword, create a new event, and name it Old Hermit. Double click the image box, click People 2 in the list, and select the second tile in the top row, then click OK. That's all we're going to do with him for now, so we can go ahead and click OK. Two tiles to the left of the old hermit create a new event named Torch 1. For the image, find exclamation mark flame in the list, and select the second tile in the top row, then click OK. Under Options, check the box next to Stepping to cause the game to animate the flame. Then click OK. Copy this event and paste it on the other side of the old hermit. Now we need to create the event that will bring up the pop-up message when the player enters the cave if the sword hasn't been picked up. In the top left corner, create a new event named Message and set Trigger to Parallel. Create a conditional branch event command with an else branch. On page 4, select Item, set it to Sorty Rust, and click OK. Under the If line, create a new event command. On page 2, under Character, click Erase Event. If the player already has the sword, we don't want anything to happen. By erasing the event, it is temporarily removed until the player leaves this map and returns. Now under the Else line, create a new event command. On page 1, under Message, click Show Text. Double-click the image box under Face. Click People 2 in the list. Select the first face on the top row and click OK. In the text box, enter You won't get far without this. Set Window Position to Middle and click OK. On the next line, put another Erase Event command. This will prevent the event from looping after the message. Without it, the message will keep popping up over and over again. Now click OK. Now there is one last thing we need to do with the 001 cave map, and that is to link it with map 001. Right-click on the Stairs tile, mouse over Quick Event Creation, and click Transfer. Click the button under Location. In the Location window, click on Map 001 in the list. On the map, click here and then click OK. Set Direction to Down and click OK. Let's edit this event. 
The cave does not have a navsys event. It doesn't need one because its only possible exit point is this transfer event, and it sends the player to only one specific entry point. But it still needs to work in conjunction with the rest of the framework. Right-click on the transfer player line, create a new control switches event command to turn the transition switch on, then click OK. We can see that creating a new command while an existing one is selected will insert the new command above the existing one. Click OK. We are now done with the cave. Switch to map 001. I already made some bush events that can be slashed by the sword. I'll walk you through setting up their event. Create a new event where you want a bush to be. Name it bush. Double click the image box. Find and select Tile Set B in the list, select the second to last tile in the fifth row, and click OK. Set priority to same as characters. Create a conditional branch for if the party has the Sortie Rust item. Under the IF line, add a Play SE command with slash 10 set as the sound effect. Under the Play SE command, Add a Control Self Switch command to turn Self Switch A on. Create a second event page, and under Conditions, check Self Switch and set it to A. For the image, we're still using Tile Set B, but this time we're using Fallen Leaves, which is the fifth tile on the bottom row. Nothing else needs to be done to the Bush event, so we can go ahead and click OK. Paste copies of the bush events so that they block the exits and a few around the walkable area of the map just to add a little detail. Now we just need to link to the cave. In map mode, right click on a grass tile, then click the green rock tile here. Back in event mode, at the same location, create a quick transfer event that links to the cave map to the tile just to the left of the stairs and has direction set to left. Edit this event to change its name to Cave Entrance and add the command to turn the transition switch on. For the image, again using Tile Set B, select the fifth from the last tile on the top row and click OK. And we are done. If we test the game now, we see that the bushes block movement and that they prevent us from leaving the first screen and that there's nowhere else to go but into the cave. Upon entering the cave, the old hermit's message pops up. If you go out and back in, it should pop up again. When you walk over the sword, you hear the sound and music effects, and it disappears. Now, if you leave the cave and go back in, we see that the message does not pop up anymore, and the sword event is not visible. Back outside, when we click on a bush, we hear the slash sound effect, and the bush is replaced by some scattered leaves, and the event no longer blocks movement. So now we can slash bushes blocking our path, and go to an adjacent screen. That's it for Lesson 7. We've learned to create new items, work with self-switches to make the visible state of objects change when conditions are met, and to make messages appear or not in similar fashion. Lesson 8 will cover burnable trees which can hide secret entrances, as well as consumable torches that can be picked up. For Grabjack.com, this is Gregory Jackson. Thanks for watching.